All right, guys, what is going on? And welcome back to the Bit of Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, my thoughts and opinions on the 2024 AFL Grand Final, as well as going th uh, through some of your guys' thoughts and opinions as well. The 2024 AFL Grand Final ended Brisbane 120, defeating Sydney 60. Yes, that's right. The Brisbane Lions doubled the Sydney Swans score in this year's grand final. The Swans, they got off to the hot start, kicking the first two goals, thanks to Will Haywood and Tom Papley. But past that point, it was all the Brisbane Lions. Yeah, the Sydney Swans kicked the first two goals of the game. But I think, you know, the Lions... Um, they handled themselves very well after that point. And I think a lot of that came from last year's grand final where we, Collingwood, kicked the first two goals of that game and then the Lions found it within themselves to be able to respond. Um, and yeah, I think they took a lot of confidence from that moment and said, we're not worried that the Sydney Swans kick the first two goals of the game. We know we can come back and get the next two, get the next three even. And that's what they did. And they actually took the lead at three-quarter time on the day. And like we all know, the second quarter, it was an absolute blitz from the Brisbane Lions. The Lions went on to kick the next seven goal. Well, not to kick. Well, they didn't kick the next seven goals consecutively consecutively but they kicked the they kicked seven goals in the second quarter to the Sydney Swans one goal only and took an absolute massive lead in to half time in the third quarter the Lions went on to kick five goals to the Swans one as well so the Sydney Swans only kicked two goals um, after quarter time in the second and third quarter they did end up kicking a few more in the last quarter um, to make the score look somewhat respectable but past the first quarter it was just all the Brisbane Lions dominating that game Kai Lohman kicked four goals Archie kicked four goals which is quite remarkable considering Archie was actually you know there to do a job on one of their defenders which I believe was Nick Blakey but to end up kicking four goals in return, um, that is just excellent. That is just really excellent. And yeah, we really couldn't see Nick Blakey in that game. He had a few decent moments. Um, he actually ended up going into the forward line um, during the final stages of the game. Um, and he, he did actually end up having a shot at goal, but um, he didn't convert. But yeah. Nick Blakey, he was, you know, massively brought out in that game thanks to the likes of Kalamachi, who, like I said before, did actually kick four goals himself in return. So that is a, an amazing job from Kalamachi. And like I said before, Kai Lohman, he kicked four goals as well. He kicked, um, I believe it was two goals in the first and then one in the second and a one some part after that. Um, but yeah, it was a big day for him, Kyle Lohman. He's, he was the one that set the tone for the Lions kicking their first two goals, saying, hey, we're, you know, we've conceded the first two goals, but we're not just going to lie down like a few teams would have in the past against the Swans when they got off to a hot start. That Kyle Lohman brought them back into that game and, you know, settled the nerves for the Lions. So he was a big part Um in the Lions winning this year's flag. Then, you know, we've got Will Ascroft. He was bloody brilliant. He actually didn't get off to the best start. It was actually Hugh McCluggage, which, you know, I was very happy about at the time because I had actually tipped Hugh McCluggage to win the Norm Smith um, on my Instagram story. Hugh McCluggage, he actually did play, you know, a big um, hand into getting the Lions in into their groove into this year, in this year's grand final. He had a good start. He picked up plenty of disposals in the first quarter and actually kicked a goal as well. That's when I was up and about thinking, you know, we could be on here. We could be on here for the huge McCluggage Norm Smith medal. But, you know, when Ascroft came into the game and really, you know, settled into the game, he was absolutely phenomenal. He was winning clearances. He was good at the stoppage. He kicked a goal on the 
day as well, you know, and I think it was one of those goals where you can sort of see happening. It was like sort of out of the stoppage, ran in towards the stoppage, got the ball from the ruck tap and kicked it around the body. And we see that happen so many times um, in normal games that I'm surprised that the Sydney Swans um, just couldn't pick up pick up on that 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 was going to happen <clears throat> that that was going to happen but it did he kicked a goal won the norm smith at a very young age as well he had 30 disposal uh 30 disposals and a goal if neil had a, kicked a goal it could have been different because neil had 34 and a goal and it was terrific at the stoppages uh at the stoppages as well Lockie neil but Lo uh, but will ascroft he felt so damaging on the day you could just see it out there the swans they just didn't have anything to answer him and yeah, like I said before, he picked up 30 and a goal and won the Norm Smith medal at a very young age. What a story that is for himself. But yeah, there was just so many moments in this game where you could really tell that the Lions just really wanted it more. And I know, you know, you could tell that in the second quarter where they blew the lead out beyond, you know, a comeback um, being able to happen. But there was just so many moments where I felt like Sydney were just looking at the ball, not wanting the ball. They were very second rate on the day where you looked at the lines. Every time there was a loose ball or it was on the ground or it was bouncing around, the lines, they would just go after it. They wouldn't just sit there and watch it. They would just really try hard to be first towards the ball. And when you can see that, when you see that happening, you, th you you pretty much think that that team's going to win, and that's what happened. There was just a lot of Swans players where I thought, in parts, they were just looking at the ball, not wanting to go after it, not wanting to chase the ball, where for Brisbane, it was completely the opposite. They were like, we want this ball. We want to get this ball. We want to go hard for this ball, and that's what they did, and they were first to the ball a lot of times compared to the Sydney Swans. And yeah, that just really played a huge factor for me in the Lions winning this year's grand final. There was also other very good factors um, like, you know, taking the likes of Heaney out, which they did. They took the likes of Goulden out as well um, and Warner out as well. He, he had some decent moments, Warner. He kicked a goal as well. But yeah, those big three players that we normally see, they were just completely just brought out of the game in this year's grand final and the Lions just absolutely took control of them and took control of the game um, and their accuracy as well the Lions it was very very good they just took their moments they took them well um, even against the Breeze they looked very they you know kicked very well um, it was a very swirly breeze so it was very hard to get a grasp of you know where to kick it when you're aiming at goal but the Lions did it very well and you know when you when you're accurate in front of goal and you get a lot of chances at goal you're more likely to win the game than not you know the swans had their sort of moments like i said before they kicked the first two goals of the granny and you know i think a lot of people at that moment thought you know surely the swans have this wrapped up at that point but you just can never count out the lions in this final series they've they've just managed to get themselves back into games and i think a lot of that would have, you know, taken from the GWS game where they came back in that game and won. I think they would have taken a lot of confidence from that moment onwards saying, we're never out of a game. We're never out of a game. If we could just stick it, you know, 40, 30 uh, points, we can be a chance at winning. But they didn't have to because they actually took the lead by 40 points at one stage. So that was good for them. And yeah, all their forwards were great. Cameron, Cameron, I thought I was really impressed with Cameron. You know, he did kick a goal. He did miss one from straight in front. But I, I, feel, I felt like he did a lot more than what he normally does. He, he got up the ground a lot more in this game. He, he was very hard at the ball. He was laying some good tackles. There was that one on Warner that he laid, which I really thought set the tone as well for the Lions when he laid that tackle on Warner, which, you know, a lot of people... Can't really tackle Warner. He, he is a very good player at um, getting out of tackles, being very evasive. But once Charlie Cameron, one of their main forward line players, is tackling Warner in the middle of the ground, you can really tell that the Lions were very up for the fight in that game. And it just proved throughout the whole day that they were ready for that game and they were able to win the game by a big margin. But yeah, that's some of my takeaways on this year's grand final. Um... Uh, another, 
here's a comment that I thought was interesting. It goes like this. Swans played one final, then a week off, another final, another week off, which isn't really true. They didn't get a week off before the grand final, but I know what you're trying to say. Brisbane played every week of the finals, building up a toughness of sorts, which is sort of true. You know, sometimes I think that it's sort of better to play consistently, you know, week by week in the final series than it is getting the week off. It's not always true. But sometimes I do think it is better because you're just in that footy mind throughout the whole time that you're playing. Um, and I thought that was, you know, a sort of advantage for Brisbane. They, they were just in that footy mind. They played every week of the finals. They had won three finals in a row. So they're feeling a lot more confident. And, you know, the Swans are going to feel confident, of course, winning their last two finals. But the Lions had won three in a row heading into this grand final. One of them was a massive comeback against the Giants. They're going to take a lot of confidence from those um, from those three wins in a row. And one of them, only one of them was at home. The rest of them were away from home. Whereas Sydney, they played two finals in a row at their home stadium. Sure, they're going to take a lot of confidence from those two wins. One was a comeback win against the Giants. One was a big win against the Power. But I just felt like it, it was this year's final series sort of played into Brisbane's hands a lot more better playing consistently week in week out um and then this there was another part in this comment which I felt was very interesting Sydney uh last played at the MCG in April six months before which was not in their favor as well I, I sort of agree, you know, the, the Swans, they're decent at the MCG. It's not their best ground to play at, but they are decent at. They've beaten us there. They've beaten the Hawks there and lost to the Tigers there. Um, but, you know, it, it had been a while since they had played at the MCG, whereas the Lions, they were coming off a prelim final at the MCG, which they had won. So they were obviously going to take a heap of confidence um, knowing that they had won a final at the MCG, and the week after, they're playing a final at the MCG. So they were going to take a lot of confidence from that and bring it into the grand final. And, you know, they're also... they. I felt like they were also going to take a lot of confidence in knowing how to play the ground, considering that they had won there the week prior. Um, they would have known how to use the dimensions of the ground, how to use the width very well, considering that they had won there the week prior. So I felt like it was a little bit of an advantage, a little bit of a home ground advantage, a home ground advantage away from home, which is rarely what you get in the final series. But it, it did sort of play... An advantage into Brisbane's hands having played a final at the MCG winning that final and then having to play another final at the MCG as well so I did think that sort of played into Brisbane's hands as well um, a lot of other comments were just saying it was a boring grand final Sydney choke this and that did Sydney choke I don't know they were a great team throughout the whole season the last few parts of the season I don't feel like they were at their best, and I feel and I felt like the Lions were growing in stature. Whereas the Swans, they they were a little bit up and down. They had a few good games here and there, but a lot of their games they had to come back and win. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Did Sydney choke? Maybe they did finish top of the ladder. Were they the best team all season? Pretty much, yes, but they did have their moments throughout the last part of the seasons, uh, throughout the last part of the season, where you can sort of, where you could sort of see that they weren't playing their best footy. Sure, they won that week one final against the Giants, but they did have to come back into that game. It wasn't their best brand of footy that they had played previously. Um, against the Power, you know, the Power, they did have a bit of a well, not a bit of a... They did have an undermanned back line. The Swans forwards took care of that. But I don't know. I just felt like Sydney throughout the last part of the year weren't playing their best footy. And it just showed on grand final day. They weren't playing... Their, they didn't play their best footy. The Lions capitalised, absolutely dominated and won the 2024 AFL grand final. But yeah, that is this video done and dusted. Let me know what you guys thought of the 2024 AFL grand final in the comments below. And yeah, cheers guys for watching this video. Catch ya.